Hello there! Today we will learn all about photographing paintings. Let's say we want to photograph this amazing painting by one of my all-time favorite artists, Conrad Ross. We could start by hanging it on the wall. Or for greater flexibility, we could place it on an easel. The most important thing is that it's perfectly straight. Next, we have to set up camera and light. I use strokes with softboxes, but if you don't have access to this kind of expensive gear, I will show later on how you can use different kind of ambient light sources to get the same good result. But let's start with the studio setup. I have my camera on a tripod and I have my two strokes on stands too. I start with putting them close to my painting setup. That way we don't have to measure heights. We just need them centered on the painting. Now let's look at our camera setup. Let's avoid wide angle lenses. They distort much too much and are more difficult to center in front of the painting. It's definitely better to use small tele lenses that could be all from 50mm up to around 100 depending on your sensor size. To save some time in the setup phase, I made this big wooden board with the exact same aspect ratio as my camera the same grid as my camera. That way I can easily center my specific camera 100% correct before my client enters the studio. It's a big time saver for me, but maybe overkill if you only shoot paintings now and then. Another simple way is just to check you have the same distance from the lens to the four corners of the painting. That way you don't get distorted lines. Now let's talk about camera settings. We always shoot in manual mode when photographing paintings. If we use more automatic settings, a painting with darker colors would appear too bright and a drawing on white paper would end up much too dark. I explain why this is in my how to use white balance tools tutorial. I link to it in the description below and I put it on my end screen. Well, Manual settings, so all paintings have the exact same exposure, no matter color or motif. And I always shoot in RAW, so any shift in color or exposure can be corrected in post. If you only shoot JPEG, you have to nail exposure and white balance 100% correct in camera, and that can sometimes be a challenge when reproducing fine art. My ISO is always at base ISO, 100 ISO so we don't get noisy grainy images. My aperture is a few steps from full opening where most lenses make their sharpest images. At full opening no lenses are at their best and if you use a very small aperture you get soft almost blurry images due to diffraction. So between 5.6 or 8 is a good starting point. Time to set up the lamps. We move the strobes, flashes or lamps as far away from the painting as we can. Well, at least a distance where we don't see any fall off in light. If the light source is too close to the painting, we have tongues of light due to the inverse square law where the double distance gives only the quarter amount of light. And the bigger the painting, the further away we need to place our lamps. I use a light meter to measure the exact amount of light across the surface of the painting, so I don't have any deviation in light intensity. Again, if you don't have access to a light meter, there are other equally fine methods. For instance, many cameras have overexposure warnings showing where the image is blown out. This you can use on purpose to see if the light intensity is evenly distributed. For that we need a clean white surface, a white board, a piece of foam, and we overexpose a few stuffs to check the flickering pattern. We don't have enough light on the left hand side, so we dial up the left lamp, so the flickering pattern is all over the surface. Like that. When we are happy with the light distribution, we can dial down a few stuffs again. Another way is to place grey cards in the corners and adjust in post. 
I have a video about that method with a somehow bragging title How to get 100% correct exposure in Photoshop What leads us to the next subject Not just evenly exposure, but correct exposure Again, we use a light meter that measures incoming light Or we can use a 50% grey card to set exposure Again, please check out my video about grey cards if you want more details about how to we still have two simple steps before we have a perfect setup for photographing paintings. One thing is to include a grey card and a color chart so we can adjust white balance and color shift in post. With the x right color checker, we also have the ability to make custom color profiles for a specific camera and light setup. Very handy for super precise colors. Next little secret for crystal clear images. A black Backdrop. The reason why this is a good idea for maintaining color and contrast is that we eliminate all the bright lights entering our lens. Imagine a car windshield in direct sunlight. Everything is hazy. This is what happens when our strokes illuminate the walls on both sides of the painting. We only need the painting to shine and we crop our images anyway. Now we will take a few photos and look at the result on the computer. Well, before we do that, I have to keep the promise I made in the beginning of this tutorial. How to take photos without artificial light. First scenario is indoors, close to a big north facing window. We don't want direct sunlight. There is a lot less light than before, I know, but that is not a problem when we have a tripod. We only need to adjust shutter speed accordingly. Our biggest challenge is that we have more light coming from the right side and we can only fix this in post, but that's a small price for not having expensive flash gear. For that we need a reference photo of for instance a white piece of cardboard or foam, like that. We can use a gradient mask to compensate for the differences in light and then use the same gradients for the painting. That way we can achieve an evenly lit painting. The correct white balance and exposure we can find using a grey card. Next example is outdoors in the shade or on an overcast day. Where I live we have many days with no sunshine and it's pretty easy to take a well lit photo. Again, a grey card will fix any color cast. Luckily daylight has a perfect spectrum of visible colors. Finally, it's time to go to Photoshop and examine all three photos. First one is perfect and we only need to crop. The indoor photo is pretty good too, but we didn't use a black background and the contrast is a little bit more pale. Let's crop this one too. Last one, our outside photo have tilted sides. We can fix this in the raw converter or in Photoshop. Like that. And let's also crop this one and open all side by side. As you can see, there are many ways to achieve perfect exposures, but the studio version is of course the most reliable one if you do it for a living. Thank you and goodbye.